students. Blessings, everybody. Do me a favor as you're coming in and share this video. I'm not going to be on here long. Let me start this song over. Quickly, quickly grab your sisters, grab your brothers, grab your friends. I'm going to share what the Father has put on my heart today. And it is my prayer that you are well. A good 10 to 15 minutes to share with you all what the father has placed on my heart I pray that the lyrics of this song has been a blessing to you and it is so fitting for what I am getting ready to discuss I would like for everybody that can to share this video and send it to everyone that you know that has had a tough year this year in particular um, as many of you know, there are many people throughout this nation and even throughout the world that have uh, been fighting COVID. Either they went through COVID or they perished because of COVID. We all know someone that has died because of COVID. And some of you are aware that uh, I was fighting for my life with COVID a couple of months back, literally in the month of July. July, August, and September were very interesting months for me as I came to grips with death and life. And um, God gave me um, such a push and a faith to begin to declare and speak life, not only over my body, but over the life of my mother and over the life of everyone that was struggling in that hospital to breathe. 
And um, as we all know, we know that um, COVID is um, a, a virus that attacks your respiratory system. And for those of us who are studious of the word of God, we know that God, Jesus Christ, he bore 39 stripes on his body uh, for every disease, every virus, every sickness, every ailment, everything that we could ever face in this life. We know that Jesus bore it. And, you know, when you face death, you put a lot of the things that you previously had as a priority in proper perspective. And as I am approaching uh, a celebration of my new year of life with my birthday being December 4th, I have uh, literally within the last 24 hours been before God in uh, just putting before him everything that he has charged these hands to accomplish and not only uh, putting before him the things that I hold very dear to my heart, uh, I've also put my heart before him. And as I put my heart before him, God began to remind me that so often we go throughout our life's journey with expectations and we go throughout our life's journey um, believing that we will always receive what we put back out. And sometimes we lose sight of the purpose that he has placed us in the earth for. When I say that we sometimes lose sight of the purpose that he has placed us in the earth for, it reminds me of the movie Eternals. And these were supernatural agents that were placed in the earth to be defenders, to be protectors, to be of uh, those that would teach uh, even their own kind how to overcome the plights and the pitfalls of humanity. And I recommend, I recommend that those of you that have not seen the movie Eternals, that you go and you watch it because it's going to speak, for those of you with a prophetic mind, it's going to speak volumes to you. I am the type of person that I observe and study environments. I observe and I study patterns. I observe and I study pathology. I observe and I pay attention to what most overlook. And because of that, uh, it, it gives me a very, it gives me a spin on a perspective that often is not looked at. And one powerful point in the movie, as the supreme authority over all the Eternals begin to speak, he began to remind this particular one that she was not to engraft herself so much into human life that she forgot or forgets about her mission. And when I thought about that, I thought about Christ and I thought about all of the things that he suffered to fulfill the mission or fulfill the will of the Father. And he went through all of these things. He subjected himself to all of the restraints and all of the painful experiences of being human for the sake of his love for the father. And as I began to think about that, I said to myself, I said, we really do not know what love truly is. And there are those of us, male and female, we are going throughout our lives. We are experiencing various things. We're experiencing life. We're experiencing family. We're experiencing relationships. We are experiencing uh, fulfilling what we think 
the identification of our assignment is, but we really do not know what, what love really is. And I, I'm, I'm going to speak specifically even to those of you who are in search and in seek of romantic love. Let me, let me help you to understand something. Many of you have been laid l-a-i-d but you have not been loved you have been told by various ones in your life that they love you but we do not know the depth of the love of the father until we can give unto those who do not have the capacity to give back to us in the realm or dimension that we give. You know, a lot of you are are struggling with this weight of depression that says, you know, God, I give so much to people. I do so much for people. I love on people. I pour into people. And why do I experience betrayal? Why do I experience dishonesty? Why do I experience liars? Why do I experience cheaters? Because I'm going to say this to you, no matter how good you are, no matter how good you are to people, there are still some people who who are struggling with spirits that they don't want to call spirits. They call it, this is just the way that I am. This is just my behavior. And they don't realize that they need to go through a, a level of deliverance so that they can accept true, pure love. You do not know what love really is until you can accept someone and love someone beyond what you identify as a flaw. Now, flaws, we all have them, but the best relationships and the best covenant connections are those that are not necessarily trying to always rub their hands on your physical body, but find the cracks in your soul that they can heal with their love. See, when God places people in your life, he places them in your life as streams of consciousness. Now, let me let me really break this thing down for you. Every person that you are encountering or engaging in your life at this point in time, they are releasing into your environment, into your field, streams of consciousness, and they are either going to be a lesson or they are going to be a blessing. No one that you are that you are experiencing or in, engaging with at this point in time has come into your world by random chance or selection. They are all there designed to teach you something or designed to help you overcome something that you have repetitively repetitively gone through so if you have an issue with letting go of grudges you're going to constantly be tested in that area of people that are going to come to agitate you irritate you frustrate you lie to you cheat on you uh be a trickster like jacob was and i'm going to say this there are a lot of people who right now because of you being in their life because God sees the bigger picture. When you put aside what you want and you put before God what his will is, that person's identity will begin to change because you have stepped into the fullness of your assignment in their life. And when we understand that we are on assignment, we stop taking the things that people do that we believe or see as flaw personal. This is the power of letting go. And I begin to I begin to put certain things before God and not just people, myself. Because I want to say this, there's a part of you that has to evolve. There's a part of you that has to grow. There's a part of you that has to come alive again. Otherwise, until you learn the lesson, you're going to experience these people, places, and things, different face, same spirit, constantly 
interacting in your world, constantly coming in your world, constantly chipping at your trust factor. Now, I'm going to say this. A lot of us as leaders, especially those of you who have been in ministry for a long period of time. Listen, I've been preaching since I was 12 years old. I have seen so much. And a lot of the things that I have seen, catch this, it has shaped my perspective. And God began to speak to me as I was in prayer. He said, I want you to watch negative thoughts. Because sometimes when you experience so much disappointment and so much, and I'm going to say this, you know, a lot of people have a lot to say as an advice or criticism for those that are in a form of leadership. And they've got all of the answers, but sometimes they don't understand how they contribute to the pain and the hurt by the things that they do to the one that they are giving advice to. And they don't understand how deep and how heavy the head is of the one that wears the crown because they're not wearing that crown. They're not carrying that weight. They are not operating in the capacity that you are assigned to. So it's easy to look at people. And I want y'all to put this in perspective, not just in leadership, but also the people that are around you, that man or that woman that's getting on your nerves, that person that you you can't stand, that you you see all of these flaws in. It's easy for us on the outside to judge and say, oh, they need to fix that and oh, they need to get this in order. But we don't understand all of the background history of why that person is exhibiting that behavior because perhaps they really are a good person they really are a a a a, a, heart, a heart of gold but because they have been taken advantage of so much because they have been manipulated and hurt so much now they turn into a monster now they shut down now they become the very thing that they despise and if we are not careful i don't care how anointed you are i don't care how gifted you are if you are not careful you will become the very thing that you despise so we got a lot of people like me and you in leadership we got a lot of people like me and you got a great call on their life got a lot of people like me and you got so much potential got a lot of people like me and you got so much that God has invested in them and blow after blow disappointment after disappointment lie after lie scandal after scandal imposter after imposter counterfeit after counterfeit has come and the temptation is to change who you are but when you get to a place where you understand that your the weapons of your warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every thought that brings itself against the knowledge of God, bringing that thing into captivity. I want you to understand that strongholds exist in your mind. And this is what God spoke to me. He said, I want you to be careful with the frequency of thoughts that you think. Because he showed me literally, we all know that energy can neither be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. Your thoughts can be measured by wavelengths. Even someone who is brain dead, their, their, the brain activity can be measured by an, a technological instrument. We have been taught that forgiveness is for us, right? We hear that all the time. Oh, forgiveness is for you because if you walk operating on forgiveness, it's like drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. And within its proper context, that is true. However, 
forgiveness is not also not just for you forgiveness is for that other person too because do you know that when you harbor lord have mercy when you harbor bit bitterness when you harbor unforgiveness when you harbor negative thoughts when you harbor anything in your heart do you know that that energy is is connecting to that person and catch this that energy or that thought is contributing lord have mercy to the outcome of their character and who they are so literally what you are doing is projecting on that person instead of releasing them in love you are projecting on that person more of the negativity and this is why a lot of people do not change because, and this is why when you pray, you need to pray. God, this is why, this is the power in Christ's prayer when he said, Lord, forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Why? Because it's twofold. It's not just about you. And if we would get out of this culture that teaches us how to be so egotistical and egocentric and selfish, because the truth of the matter is, again, you don't know what real love until you can put yourself, your desires, what you want on the back burner. People can tell you all day that they love you, but love, let me, let me look at the scripture. I'm going to get off of here at 7.40. I'm already 10 minutes past my time. Lord have mercy. But I got to get this out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, I'm going to start with verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profited me nothing. Charity, love suffereth long. Can I tell you that your ultimate purpose of everything that you're going through in this lifetime is to really teach you how to become like Christ. And how do you become like Christ? When you put your ego to the side, your right to be right to the side, your defense mechanisms to the side, your, uh, your vindictiveness to get back at people that have done you wrong or have put your mouth. You know, a lot of people have looked at me, and I'm going to say this, over the course of my process of becoming who I am, God has softened me a lot. Where I could strike out and where I could really put some people to sleep, God has, he has taught my fingers how to fight and he has given me new weapons. My weapons is not going on Facebook, typing out messages to get back at subliminal message messages my weapons is no longer going live and, and telling people giving them the straight business and, and or fighting physically my weapons are not any of those things why because i have learned that those things affect my frequency and love is the highest frequency that you can buy abide in love is the gatekeeper of all things love is the gatekeeper of wealth love is the gatekeeper of wisdom because guess what if ultimately if you don't love yourself that lack of love and if you don't love god that lack of love can cause you to operate in voids and cause you to lose everything you can become a billionaire trillionaire overnight but if you do not understand the power of god and the power of his word and the frequencies that he has established of higher dimensions you will lose everything why because your soul is out of whack Everything that is attracted to you is as a result of the quality of your mind. People will never be your problem. You will always be your own problem as a result of the quality of your thoughts. So I want to tell my people, and I'm going to continue to read, but it's so much that I have to say. I might have to come back on another day. 
I don't care how you have been disappointed, how you have been hurt, how you have been wounded, how you have been rejected, how you have been treated, how you have been mistreated. You have to watch the thoughts that you think. Because your thought life controls everything that is being put into your world. When you focus on being grateful, you know, I mentioned the COVID thing for a reason because I'm grateful that I'm still alive. I'm grateful that my mother made it. I'm grateful. Listen, I don't have time to, to, to grieve over what does not belong to me. I don't have time to grieve over things that don't profit me because I have somewhere to go. I am a supernatural agent sent on assignment in the earth realm to shift and awaken the God consciousness of people. I, I'm on assignment. And so when you understand that you're on assignment, you don't have time to be configured to the matrix because you don't belong here. So thoughts, strongholds, they are systemic. They come from your mind and these things have to be cast down. So some of you, because you, I'm going to say it like this, some of you, and I'm going to speak to you women, you have these thoughts and you say, you know, all men are dogs. How are you going to find a man of God if you don't believe that they exist? How are you going to receive from a God that you have not first believed? Listen, faith is a frequency. Your thought life, your belief system, it is a frequency. Sometimes you keep attracting the same experiencing experiences to you because of the thoughts that you think. God said, control your negative thoughts. Replace all negativity with positivity affirm and establish decree and declare God's word over your life if you are not careful you will be like Job because of pain it will drive you to speak curses on your life it will drive you to say stuff out of your mouth you know I, I God has been really dealing with me he said I want you to listen to the things that you say I said something today and I and I'm gonna tell you what I said. I said I don't trust people as far as I can throw them. And there's a reason why I say that. And although there are legitimate reasons why I say that, I have to be careful. Because if I'm if I'm constantly echoing, and I'm talking about me right now, if I'm constantly echo echoing words of distrust, I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. nobody. Y'all listen to me. That is a frequency that is going out into the into my atmosphere. And that is a frequency that is constantly drawing people that are not trustworthy into my life, into my world. Why? Because I'm constantly thinking. I can't trust people as far as I can throw them. And if we're honest, a lot of the things that we say, although they may be true, a lot of the things that we say are rooted in painful experiences that have taught us to be extremely guarded. To be extremely cautious. To be always looking over our shoulders. And I want to say this to, in general, in, it's 747. Love, okay, I'm going to read this real quick. Love suffers long. You can't say that you really love somebody if you're not willing to suffer long with them. You husbands, or those of you who even dare to be a husband, you can't uh, say that you love your wife and you have no long suffering. Because guess what? You're not perfect and your wife is not perfect. I'm, I don't know why I'm even going here. Wives, you can't say that you love your husband and you can't suffer long with them because guess what? Marriage reveals your true level of maturity. 
Relationships reveal your true level of of relation of, of of maturity. Why? Because throughout the process of time, you're going to see things in that person that you do not like. You're going to see behaviors. You're going to see patterns. You're going to see thought processes. You're going to see things that you do not like. And your love cannot just be related to relations. But your love has to be rooted in, you know what? I see this, but let me pour, let me pour real more love on that area. Let me not, let me be the difference in what he or she has experienced with men and women. Let me show her that not all uh, men or women are the same. Let me, women, let me, let me show, let me build, let me be wise with my mouth. Let me not lash out every time I get an opportunity. Why? Because God is cultivating and teaching me how to suffer long. God is teaching me how to be wise. Uh, the word of God says a wise woman builds her house. A wise woman does not tear down her her house with her words. So even if I do identify a flaw and even if I do identify something that is worthy of me going completely ham, let me take this to God in prayer and let me le let me learn how to suffer long because if we really love this is what it requires. Love suffers long and is kind. It envies not. It does not puff, it puff itself up. So if you're constantly your own priority, you're selfish and you don't know what love is. If you're constantly envying, you are envious, you don't know what love is. If your patience is short, tweaked, you do not know what love is. It does not behave itself unseemly. It seeks not its own. It is not easily provoked. That's a big one right there. It thinks, love thinks no evil. This is why God tells us, he told us through the apostle Paul to think on these things, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are of a good report. Why? Because these things contribute to the stream of God going forth in you to other people. I have to come back at a later time. Y'all read 1 Corinthians 13 on your own time. But I want to say to everybody, we have so much to be grateful for. And every experience that you have had from the time that you were born up until this point has only been designed to develop you into the stature of Christ. That's it. And that's all. We have our own definition of goals. We have our own definitions of success. We have our own definitions of achievement. But every person and everything that we have ever experienced up until this point has all been designed to bring us into the stature of Christ. There is no greater wisdom. There is no greater peace than the freedom of truly have let go. Some of you, it's not so much that you need to forgive other people, but you need to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the flaws that you have. Because guess what? God loves you with your flaws and all. Learn to look past people's uh idiosyncrasies and look past people's flaws and look past people's mistakes and look past and see the root when you it's easy to to apply love when your perspective is right it's easy to be who god has called you to be despite all of the hurt and pain the stripes that you bear on your back. And I'm speaking to you leaders right now. Because if you ever say yes to God. You know how painful that a true yes to him is. If you ever were that one that, that Christ enlisted to feed his sheep. Because because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you. It's not by coincidence that 
Peter was asked, do you love me? Do you love me? Because if you love me, you're going to feed my sheep. Because everything, every affliction, every disappointment, every tear that you've ever cried. Because you're going to cry some tears. There are some people that you love that's going to hurt you to your soul. And they don't even know that they're hurting you. They don't even know that they're triggering you. They don't even know. Th this is why Christ can say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because there are some people that's going to do some things to you. They're not even going to be conscious because it's so embedded in their character. It's so embedded in, in, in who they have become. They have, they have become a monster and don't even know. They, they have become a trickster and don't even know. There are some people who are so skillful at playing game that they don't even understand that you're the coach. They're not conscious of how their actions and even their disregard of your feelings, how it affects you. But you are not in charge of their outcome. You are in charge of keeping yourself centered in God. You are in charge of making sure that you are living free. True freedom is exercising the power of letting go. Letting go of your need to control an outcome of a situation. The steps of a righteous man. They are ordered by the Lord. The Lord, he knows what is good and he knows what is best. Make sure that in every situation that you give the exact opposite of what the enemy wants you to give. Show forth the love of Christ. In you showing forth the love of Christ, you are exercising a level of of mastery that few people have obtained. Verse five says, it does not behave itself unseemly. Love is always a class act. It seeks not its own. It is not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. Stop believing that people love you if they don't have the ability to bear the weight of who you are or who you're becoming or what comes along with you. Because can I tell you, there are some stones. Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, you are a rock. You are not the rock, but you are a rock. All of God's people, we are stones. Jesus is the chief cornerstone to which we are built upon. We are weights. Do you know that a diamond is the diamonds in my ring? It's a it's a weight. Do you know that the stone in this ring is a weight? Every stone has its own level of weight. And only those who understand the power of value are willing to pay the price for it. Are willing to carry it. You've got to understand because some of you are, you are disappointed, you're discontented, you are just traveling throughout this world, existing. You don't understand that you are a heavy weight and not everybody is going to suffer along with you. Not everybody is going to be able to bear you. But can you love despite your knowledge of their incapabilities and incapacity. Can you still give when you know that they don't have the capacity to give it back? Can you still do, fulfill your duty, fulfill your role, <laughs> fulfill your assignment in their life? You know, there's some of us that God sends to underwrite, to, to support, to, to help escort. Some of you don't even know you're on assignment. You, what you, your investment wasn't uh, a waste of time. Your pouring was not a waste of time. This was what you were called and sent to do. And when the father said, 
when the father says it is finished, then it is time for him to route you somewhere else. Father said to me, he said, I'm sending you in a new direction and I don't want you to be attached to anything. And this is why this time, although I have shown you the truth, although I have shown you the root, although I have shown you and you know what it is that I've revealed and what you see, your response this time has to be different because while I am revealing them, I'm also exposing you and I'm highlighting the areas that you thought you were over. I am highlighting the areas that you've got to master because you don't have much time to waste. Every hurt, every pain, every discontentment, every disappointment, every rejection, every moment where you have ever felt like you are you were not valued to the capacity that you deserved. All of that was designed to teach you how to operate in the stature of Christ. And guess what? The only way that you're going to get this is through the things that you suffer. It ain't going to come through speaking in tongues, shouting and dancing, praising and worshiping. Is going. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Every suffering, every suffering is designed to activate a level of glory, a level of mastery that you have not experienced before. I want all of you, all 67 of you, to forgive people. Forgive yourself. Learn to respond differently. Learn to watch your negative thoughts. Some of you, you don't, you, you, you think everybody in the world has an agenda, has a motive, is a user, is a liar, is a cheater. I want you to change all of that. Give people an opportunity to show you who they are. Let them do, let time, listen, time is your best friend. Time is going to reveal to you everything. You know, there were a lot of disciples that said to Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I'm with you. Judas was the main one. I love you. I love you. I love you. But time reveals all things because true love is long suffering. Love is not blind. I know Eve told y'all, love is blind, love is blind. I know she told y'all that. Love ain't blind. Love got both day, <laughs> both the eyes open and we and see and see very well. But love can see and still love. Because the way that God loves us, he knows the depths of hearts, y'all. And he loves us the same. And he said to me, he said, even when you wasn't ready for me, because the truth of the matter is, there's some people, they're not ready for you. But if you love them, love waits until they are ready to receive. Can I tell you, God loved us enough that he waited until the right moment that we will be willing to accept and receive him to pour. This is how we have to handle people. The same tolerance, the same patience, the same grace, the same mercy that God gives to us. We have to give it to other people. Change your response. And for many of you, the word for this season is to let go. Let go of your need to control. Release that thing to God. Release that person to God. Release that situation to God. He ultimately knows what his perfect will will be. There will be times that you will see farther than those that you love can see. There will be times that you, you, you have a pulse on destiny for more than what they have knowledge of. But what you do is you labor in your love until they get there. That's what real love is.
Do not go into 2022 with weights. Do not go into 2022 with false ideations and false expectations. Do not. Because there's so much life that God wants you to live. There's so many experiences. There are people, places, and things that you've got to see and impact. And if your heart is clogged up with all of these things, you won't be effective. Change your response. If they're wrong, show them how to operate as right. Now, this is a challenge, y'all. Y'all saying that me, amen, but this is a challenge. When they are wrong, cover their wrong and still love them as if they got it right. Because all that is going to do is please the Father. Everything that Christ did on our behalf, he loved us and he loved God. The things that you suffer through with people, the things that you you labor with people through is as a result of your love. Now, on the flip side, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get off of here. There are some of you who, for the sake of your love, have been taken advantage of, and you don't know the balance between learning when to, to love and when to leave. <laughs> there are some of you, your love is being taken advantage of. And God does not want you to be a fool. If this word resonates with you, you know, the song says you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them and know when to walk away, know when to run. You've got to know your limits. The only way that you know that is by the counsel of God. Now, if God says, close that chapter and close that book then that's what you've got to do but you've got to know Mary don't laugh at me <laughs> yeah. now I'm going to give it y'all know I'm going to give y'all real life and I'm going to give you truth now I ain't saying be nobody fool now I, I, Apostle is not telling you, oh, just be, just be a loving fool and just let everybody walk all over you. I, I ain't telling you that. But what I am telling you is let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you in all things. Don't absorb past experiences. Don't absorb previous hurt and pain. Each time, let go. Love. Love God and love people. It's 8.06, y'all. I'm going to have to come back on another time. I do have to. Uh, I have something that I have to do, but I had to stop and I had to share that with you all. Remember, people are streams of consciousness. They are, they are designed to teach you something. Either they are going to be a lesson or they're going to be a blessing. And I want to encourage all of you. No matter whose life you've been sent to, no matter whose world you are in at this current time, be the reason why they believe again. Be the reason why they hope again. Be the reason why they love fearlessly again. Y'all on this broadcast, do people right. Do right by people. Love people how, treat people how you want to be treated. Respect people's feelings the way you want yours to be respected. Be the reason why people heal and not why they hurt. I love y'all. If this word bless you, I'm going to even say this, sow a seed into this word. Sow a seed and call it mastery 
call it letting go. Father, I'm letting go of every pain and hurt that I've harbored over the years. Father, I'm I'm ascending into a place where I'm not going to respond the way that I'm being provoked to respond because I understand the power of letting go. I understand the power of love. I understand the power of wisdom. I understand that my thoughts control my life. I understand that I am the captain of my ship. I understand, God, that you are creating me to be and shaping me, molding me, shaping me to be who you want me to be. Some of you have got to take control and say, God, I'm not going to become this monster. I'm not going to become this beast. I'm going to still give. That's right. For those of you that were blessed by this word, sow a seed into this word. U-K-G-I-A, all caps. PayPal.me slash PCLJ. Thank you for putting it in the comments. Call the seed mastery. How do you ascend when you get over these little humps? You rise above fear into love. When you rise above manipulation into love. When you rise above, yes, I am on Zell. You can send it to Apostle. My, my email actually for Zell is prophetessclgglobal at gmail.com. All right? So that should work for those of you that have Zell. So we'll see it into this word. And Father, I decree and declare over each and every person, before I get off of here, I decree and declare over each and every person that heard this word, Lord, that you will bring healing, that you will bring resolve to their heart. Father, that they will no longer think along the, the lines of revenge and spite and, and negativity, but Father, they will ascend above these tests, that they will grow in every experience that they have. Father, I declare that your love will shine upon them as light and their light your light will illuminate every dark place father we decree and declare god that like a magnet they are now attracting wealth they are now attracting the right people they are now attracting those that belong in their world father we decree and declare that you're sending agents of healing agents of love agents of counsel agents of wisdom agents oh god that will contribute to the fruition of the seed that you have placed on the inside of them father we thank you that every seed that they sow will will go out into this world as debts that they will not owe father we thank you that poverty is being canceled off of the life of the believer poverty in every area poverty in their mentality poverty in their soul father we thank you that it is being canceled now by the power of your blood and by the power of this word father i declare that this word will activate a, a sense of maturity a call a provocation to mature in your believers, oh God, that we will no longer be tossed and driven by fleshly desires or fleshly, fleshly doctrines that have been etched in the fiber of our being. But Father, we thank you tonight that you have brought us into a place of mastery. And Father, we will know you and know ourselves and be more discerning in this season. I hear the Father say that for many of you, you have need to increase your discernment. Be ye anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication. Some of you, you're going to have to increase your patience to wait on the Lord and wait on some of the things that you expect. God is going to do it, but you've got to make sure that your, your mind can match the manifestation. There are some things that manifest. We seal that prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. There are some things that manifest that our mind cannot conceive or comprehend because we're not your, your mind is not where it needs to be. I want you to consciously work on the estate of your mind, the thoughts that you think, the words that you speak. Some of us have spoken some things for so long it's become a part of who we are. And we don't even realize that those are things that are... They are defense mechanisms that are designed to keep you barred and guarded. Do you know that when you guard, when you're so guarded, you guard out the good with the bad? And I'm going to say this. I'm going to get off of here. This is my third closing. Y'all know I'm a preacher for real. 813. 
just because you love and you can do everything right it does not mean that you won't ever be hurt but mastery is when you can love beyond god loves us beyond even after we got saved and said oh god we i love you lord i love you jesus i worship and adore you you know the songs we sing i just want to tell you lord i love you more than anything i'll cross the rivers and oceans and and the, and skip a puddle and go through the lion's den and all that stuff for you god because i love you and when we started walking through the fire and going through hell, we started cussing and we started saying all kind of stuff. And guess what? Even when we disappointed God, even when we did things that we should not have done, he still loved us. Sometimes you got to be that. Because he's teaching you how to be more like him. Darlene says she that's why she's careful with some songs she sings. If you know, like I know, you better be. Because every word that we utter, we become accountable to. We become accountable to. Just because you love and just because you do the right thing does not mean that you won't ever get hurt. Sometimes you will be hurt. But can you still stay faithful to your assignment? Can you still love? You don't know the depths of the love of God until you can love people that don't love you the same way that you love them. Until you can love people that you know they have no intent, no, fut no futuristic plan of solid longevity for you the way that you do them. Can you still love? That is the question. Verse 8 says, it, verse 7 says, it bears all things. Love, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I want you to think about that the next time you tell somebody that you love them. Learn to love yourself. Learn to forgive yourself and learn to let go. I got to go. I'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Good night.